Hi everyone, today I will show you how to perform data streaming with a link chain. Streaming is critical in making applications based on LLMs feel responsive to end users. We will explore Stream and AStream, the default implementations of streaming, and also AStream events, a new method that allows to stream intermediate steps and the final output from a chain. We will also explore how to use streaming with a link chain in combination with fast API and stream data from a fast API backend to a front end. Okay, I'm currently in VS Code and you can also find the link to this repository in the description. On the left you can see multiple files. We will start with the basics IPython notebook and I will walk you through the streaming interface of Langchain. So first you have to make sure that you actually installed Langchain. I use Langchain OpenAI too because I use the OpenAI model. This is a model that supports streaming, but of course you can also use any other model that supports streaming. When you create your model, you have to set streaming to true, otherwise the response will not be streamed. So first we import our environment variables. So this .end file includes the OpenAI API key, and then we create our first chain. Our chain is based on a model, a prompt, and an output parser. And this is how we construct our chain with the Langchain expression language. So let's first create that. And then we're gonna explore the normal stream method. So if you want to stream, you have to use the stream method. And if you want to see the streaming inside the print statement, you have to set the flush argument to true. So we've got a single variable in our chat prompt template. So we want the LLM to perform a joke about a parrot with 200 words. The LLM will create a response by predicting a new token based on the input and the former predicted tokens. We will then get the response token by token or here chunk by chunk. That's why we perform a for loop here. So let's now do this. And now you can see that's how that streaming works. And we can see that the answer gets created chunk by chunk. If you want to stream in combination with an API, it makes sense to use async. Otherwise you block the main thread and therefore make the application very slow. So streaming also supports async operations. And instead of stream, this is called a stream. And now you can perform this async for chunk in chain a stream and uh, this works similar like before but it's now an asynchronous operation and this is the preferred way to do it when you use it in combination with fast api a new way to perform streaming with the link chain is using a stream events and this is the syntax so instead of just using a stream we have to use a stream events and we pass in the string again and we also have to pass in the version currently the version is v1 so I'm gonna show you how that looks like. You get a much more complicated object. As you can see, this is a dictionary, which has an event. The event is here on chat model start. It got a run ID, it got the name of the model and some metadata and also the data input. And then in the second step, this is where actually the streaming happens. The event is on chat model stream. And here we can see that this is an instance of AI message chunk and here we can see the content here we can see the a here is the pair parrot is so this is now created token by token and this is saved inside this ai message message chunk object so currently this object is of course far too complex to actually work with it so we have to use a different more complex syntax so first step is that we have a look at all the available events so i create an empty list and stream, append the events, and then create a set from that events. And we can now see that we've got three events here on chat uh, model stream, on chat model end. This is when the model is finished with creating. And here on chat model start, this is when streaming starts. And this is where we get our tokens. So now we can perform it like this. So we perform streaming and check if the event is on start model, then we can print stream started. If the event is on chat model stream, we can access the data key of the event and then access the chunk key. And this is now an AI message chunk and we can access the content property of that class. So we can print it like this. And now we can see the following stream started and now this gets created token by token. So this is how a stream events works a little bit more complex than the a stream method, but you've got more control over what happens in the stream. Now let's have a look at how this works in combination with fast API. We will use a rag pipeline as many of you requested and stream the results. So let's go to the app.py. 
and here is the code. So first we have to import some classes from Langchain and also from Fast API. Very important from Fast API, we have to import a streaming response class. This is needed to actually stream the results. So then we load our OpenAI API key. We create an instance of OpenAI embeddings to embed documents. So we create two very simple documents, doc loves to eat pizza and provide some fake metadata. Then we create a vector store, pass in the embedding function to create the embeddings and then set the vector store to a retriever to have a standardized retrieval interface. Okay, next step is to create a template with context This is standard for retrieving the documents and then we also pass in a question. So this is very standard for creating a rag pipeline. So this is the complete chain. We pass in the context, which is here the retriever or the um, documents we get back from the retriever. We, we pass in the question as runnable path through. So we don't change it, pass it to the prompt, pass that to the model and pass that to an output parser. So very standard and now let's create the application. So we create an instance of fast API and then we create our function which should generate the streaming response. So instead of now just printing the chunk, we have to do the following. First, we have to replace the new line with this BR tag. So new line does not work in HTML. So this is what we do in HTML. Instead of just printing a new line, we will use this tag and this will create a new line in HTML. And then we will yield this content and we have to provide it like this. So data, double colon, and then new line, new line. So this is because we use a server sent event protocol, SSE. And this is how the protocol expects the data to look like. So we need that data, double colon, and then followed two new lines at the end to indicate a complete event message to the client. The next is that we create a file response where we pass the index.html, which is in a static folder. So this is just for displaying our HTML file. And this is where actually the magic happens. So what we're gonna do is we create the chat stream endpoint with a path parameter where we pass the message and the message is just a simple string. This gets passed to this function and then we use the streaming method here. And we have to provide that inside that streaming response class. We have to provide the function, th then set the argument and have to set the media type to text event stream to actually make this work. And then we just have to start our application here on port 8000. So this should now work. And now we have to receive this message in the index.html. So this is the important part. So we create a new instance of event source in JavaScript and that gets passed in our chat stream endpoint. And now we have this on message function and this now will receive an event and inside that event object, there is a data attribute and we append that data to the inner HTML of that data container. The data container is here. It's when we start typing, it's empty, but then the inner HTML gets appended here. So this is how this works. And now let's actually try this out. So I added also a little bit of material CSS to make that look a little bit nicer. So let's go to the app.py and now just run python app.py. If everything works, we can see UV icon running at port 8000, and then let's now open a browser. So this is our simple chat interface, and if you have a look at the application, we can see these two documents. So the dog loves to eat pizza. So we can actually ask what does the dog like to eat? And we should now stream that Okay, that was a little bit too simple. Write 200 words. <laughs> Let's make that a little bit longer. And now we can see this actually works. We get streamed this token by token and it gets displayed in HTML. Okay, so we can see this works with the async method a stream from Langchain, but we can also do this with the new events API. So this is a little bit more complex again, but the functionality is pretty much the same. So we stream the event try to access the event. And if it's on chat model stream, this is where actually the tokens are streamed. We then can serialize that message chunk. So this is where we access the AI message chunk. I showed you that in the notebook before, and this has got this content attribute. So this is where we access the chunk content attribute, save it in the variable, and then also replace the new line 
with this HTML newline character. Again, we yield that event. And also we can do something like this. So if the uh, chat has ended, we can print that the chat model completed its response. We could send an email or whatever we want if we get that at the end. So let's stop that and now run python app underscore events.py. It serves the same file. So what does the dog like to eat? Write 200 words. And now we can see this also works as before. Great, so you now learned how to perform streaming with LangChain and even in combination with a full stack application. If you liked this video, please like and comment it. Thank you very much for watching. See you, bye bye.